Hello, dear friends. We are sincerely glad to greet you again. Today we are going to talk with the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Hello. Igor Mikhailovich, it is such a pleasure to read and hear our viewers share their achievements and victories on the spiritual path, and it's all thanks to the knowledge you share with us. Our viewers say that this is the knowledge which helps to rapidly move on the path towards the goal, gives wings and helps to gain life. A lot of tools have already been given by you on the spiritual path, tools which could facilitate and accelerate the spiritual path of a person. We get positive feedback on how much these tools help people in their everyday lives. In particular, such a tool as Catharsis has often helped our viewers and it has helped both partners and married couples to get out of this narrowed state of consciousness, to get rid of intrusive thoughts and obsessive states and to stop being conductors of those very scenarios of the system. You know, everything is exactly as you said. When you voice the truth, when you expose the thoughts in your head, you thereby expose the entire secret action of the system and squeeze out that mosquito. So the question is the following, Ingrid Mikhailovich. What if there is no one to share it with? There is no one around whom you can tell about all these scenarios of the system. Does the effect of squeezing out a mosquito work if you write these thoughts down, for example, in a journal? Or is it enough that personality realizes that these thoughts don't belong to it and simply doesn't implement and all these scenarios. Well, let's start with the fact that squeezing out a mosquito is not catharsis. It's a different thing, but it also works in a similar way. Let's put it so. Catharsis itself actually implies that the thoughts which pass through a person's spiritual barrier reach him as personality and begin, let's say, to intrude on him. But those are improper thoughts, not the thoughts which a person ordered as personality. For example, a person is engaged in some work. Naturally, the thinking process should be focused on performing that work. But at this time, a negative thought comes to him about someone. Doesn't such a thing happen, friends? It happens quite often. This is precisely an implanted thought aimed at separation. Those are power impulses that come from Shaitan himself, so to speak. Naturally, if a person is focused on work, he is less focused on spiritual connection, or not focused at all. He doesn't even know what it is. A spiritual connection with the spiritual world. So at that moment, such a thought comes to him, and he begins to perform the work somewhat automatically and actually starts thinking over all these negative thoughts, recalling all the bad things that happened and separating in his mind from that person already. This is a frequent scenario that happens to many people in the course of a day, many times. We don't even remember it all. It flashes by for a minute or two, or even a couple of seconds. But we agree with that, and we start thinking about it. In other words, we invest the power of our attention precisely in this thought which unfolded before us. And it turns out that we finance it, meaning the system has implanted this thought in us through our consciousness. Well, our, in quotes, but it's ours. So this implanted thought has robbed us. It has taken away the power that we should have been directing to the spiritual world. And this is where it's important to stop this. I mean, not to give power to these thoughts. The simplest method is certainly catharsis. Later on, it's a little bit more complicated. Why? It is simple. In fact, it is simple. I am not contradicting myself. It's really simple. But it is simple when you already stand firmly on the spiritual path then you can really squeeze any thought out like a mosquito. Whereas the initial path, when a person, let's say, during the day, repeatedly comes off the path and returns back onto it, sort of a slow, stage-by-stage stage mastering of this path, then, of course, very often such thoughts come, and shaitan destabilizes a person, makes his path very narrow, like a razor blade, and it's hard for the person to stand firm. At the slightest, say, temptation, the person becomes distracted, 
and falls. Once he has fallen, he realizes that he has fallen, starts rising again. And this goes on to infinity. In other words, it turns out that during the day, the person spends a lot of power of attention on fighting himself as well as on rising, and he constantly finances the system. So, in order to avoid this, such a method as catharsis was developed a long time ago. And it is exactly what Jesus Christ was talking about. So, the Cathars, the first followers of Jesus Christ, used it well. This method consists in a conversation, of course, we talked about this. That is, a person shares those thoughts which come to him, but he doesn't order them, and he has nothing to do with them. That's what is important. These are constant implanted thoughts by the system, and no sane person, even if he hears some kind of an attack, of the system against himself. It doesn't mean that a human, as personality, who says that, thinks that way. On the contrary, he doesn't think that. And this is important. That's what the devil in him wants him to think and do. And when a person purifies himself, while this is in fact purification, he exactly voices the imposed thoughts and they cease to function and work. This is a very good method. But that's when you have someone around with whom you can have catharsis, who doesn't judge, who understands that those are demons, someone who struggles with them himself in a similar way. It's a wonderful method. But imagine, as we said in the previous videos, there is a family. One person follows the spiritual path or tries to follow it, while the other one, well, why would he or she need it? He's fine as it is, he's an alcoholic, a drug addict, or just an idiot. What for? He lives in his own little world. And here, a person who is on the spiritual path will begin to tell this alcoholic about catharsis. How will that end? In yet another commonplace squabble, right? Nothing good will come out of that. Will catharsis work? No, it won't. It'll just complicate everything, even if he's a great person, just a wonderful one, who understands everything. But he is under the power of shaitan. He's an atheist. How can you tell him about this? After all, he's not only an atheist, he's also an egoist. And because he's an egoist and his primary consciousness predominates in him, that's why he's a slave of shaitan. Naturally, he will perceive everything as directed against him. And every word or picture thrown by that very demon into the mind of a person who is trying to purify himself, trying to weaken the system by voicing everything that comes, will be perceived by that very atheist or egoist as an attitude of that person towards himself. So nothing good will come out of that, right? That's why another method has been developed for such a case. A journal. Any person, if he is not lazy, can write down the thoughts that come in. The main thing here is not to get carried away, because one might get involved in this process and write entire novels, you see? That is, become a writer. Such things also happen. Therefore, everything should be clear and simple. The goal and the task of a person is to stand firmly on the spiritual path and strive for the spiritual world. He should direct all his attention, the maximum available, I repeat, the maximum available attention, towards the spiritual world, and not to engage in appeasing the desires of shaitan. That's what is important, right? But what should be done when thoughts that are thrown by the system itself pass through our spiritual immunity? There is no one to voice them to. There is a journal, and what has happened should be described in it. For example, there appeared such a thought about this and that, and so on. It turns out that this thought is transferred onto paper. Is it good or bad? What is better, catharsis with a person or on paper? There are plenty of pros and cons here, but there's also a voice recorder. We live in a civilized world, right? A voice recorder can also serve as a tool Digital media. for comparison. And a lot of people get confused if there is no one to talk to, or even if there is someone to talk to. However, a thought has come to you right then. A person or people you can talk to are busy or far away. What to do? Leave it for later. Yes, it is good to study it later, but you are under attack now. So, it is necessary to voice this now in order not to invest power but on the contrary, to take power away from shaitan, right? In this situation, of course, you take either a voice recorder or 
A notebook. A journal? Yes, a journal. So what is better? In this case, you should also approach this in the right way, friends. Let me explain. A journal or a voice recorder, whatever, should be used in peak situations, meaning when you're under attack or, on the contrary, when you are elated. That also should be recorded. In other words, when you are, let's say, in a very strong contact, when you feel the spiritual world, when joy and love are flowing in you, pour it out in the journal. This will help too, or on the voice recorder. And there is a significant difference here. When, for example, we write down the peak moments of attacks from shaitan, I emphasize, we write them down in a journal. We immediately trace the cause and effect relationships as well. We look at it broadly. We realize that we've been distracted, we've lost our perception through feelings, we've been attacked, and we've got this action unfolding, which exactly shows what a demon wants. It wants me to have a fight with someone or to go back in time. Well, that is simply ridiculous. But how many times during the day we go back to the past, to our childhood or somewhere else? People say that memory works this way. It throws such things in. A simple question. You are sitting and watching TV, and they start showing you programs that were many, many years ago, but you're watching the news and want to find out about the present day, right? It's relevant. But they show you what took place 20, 30, or 50 years ago. This is completely irrelevant. In other words, there is no logic, right? So is there any logic if you return to school or to kindergarten during the day and talk to some friends? A question, to which friends, if you don't even know whether they are alive or not? And you don't gain any experience out of that for today. None, absolutely right. But there is supposedly an activation of memory in you and the like, an activation of memory or a game of shaitan because you are driven into those situations and the same emotions are evoked in you. You are returned precisely to that time when you were fully controlled by shaitan. After all, shaitan doesn't drive you back to those moments when there was a very strong spiritual surge in you, when love ignited in you. Why is this so? Well, that's really so. If this is the work of memory, then what should we, as humans, as very complex structures, aspire to? To where we feel better, easier and more pleasant. What can be better than contact with the spiritual world, than our spiritual contact? After all, it cannot compare to anything, right? Of course. The question is why this memory is so selective and who selects these memories for us? Absolutely right. That's where the entire concept of almost all sciences that study the work of the brain deal with memory, our psyche, and so on, breaks down. Why? Because the reality is different, and it shows exactly the facts that it's not us who decide and make decisions. And our consciousness, no matter how strange it may seem, is in somebody else's hands. And it is actually not that tool which we need or which we expect to receive. And here is the question, who are we then, you see? And all these questions and understandings give a holistic perception of this world and put everything in their proper places within a person. And when he gives comprehensive answers to such simple questions, he begins to look at it reasonably. And precisely at this point, when a peak state of an attack from the system arises, by writing it all down, a person begins to understand and see the holistic picture. But if you have written it down and forgotten it, there's no point in this, my friend. You should reread your journal and you should work with it. What does it mean to work with it? It's when you are in a neutral state, you know, like you are neither cold nor hot, none. You take your journal and start rereading it. And it turns out that before every attack, you were exactly none. In a neutral state. Of course. Neither cold nor hot. Yes. But at this time, you are not on the side of the spiritual world. You are nowhere. Therefore, you are taken by shaitan as prey. And he has the right to do that because you've become weak. Understanding this, you will no longer allow these states, right? Many tricks that pass, all of them will be in your diary. And by studying and rereading it from time to time, you will become, so to say, stronger and closer to the spiritual world. That's the point of catharsis, which is, shall we say, sort of individual and aimed at working with the journal.
However, there is a voice recorder, and there's a paradox here. The voice recorder works very well for a person when he falls into this neutral state. But when he records on a voice recorder, peak states of the moment of upsurge, when a person is in the maximum state of contact with the spiritual world, when he has an understanding of the world like the palm of his hand, when he sees, understands, and feels it all. And this is where a person tells himself that, sorry, mate, but falling down is ridiculous. Everything is simple. The world is beautiful, and the like. And you share this state with yourself. Besides modern digital media, transmit energy as well. They transmit that feeling, which you had in you. Thus you also become your own helper. And here, when you have a neutral state, and you already know that as soon as you become neutral, it means that an attack will come. That's where you can turn on the voice recorder, and you tell yourself how easy it really is to dive in. You just dive in, and it becomes easy for you. In this case, it works. But the voice recorder doesn't work well during deep falls, let's say, when you are attacked, when you're bogged down in matter, when you are torn from all sides, and you have only problems, and the system attacks you, you hate everyone, there are emotions, hormones, and everything else in you, then the voice recorder won't help you in any way. That's where the paradox is. You'll be annoyed with yourself, won't you? Why? You will record only negative points. You won't have analysis. You won't have understanding. You will have a situation that will make you fall when you are in a neutral state instead of lifting you up. That's how the handy means of, let's say, that very catharsis work. Friends, if you don't have anyone to talk to, although it is always better to have a friend, an assistant, a companion, or say, a fellow traveler. Igor Mikhailovich, it's important for those insights not to be solely in a person's head, right? Of course. So it's a must to bring them out. Absolutely. People have been using this practice for thousands of years. When a demon attacks them, it's enough to voice that, and the demon becomes weaker. This is important. Whereas nowadays, for some reason, even science already asserts that when you have negative states or negative thoughts, if you voice them aloud, everything falls into place. Yes, exactly. It all sort of releases you. Well, I wonder how many theses they have defended on that truth which was written millennia and millennia ago. There are a great many studies in psychology on the subject of how to regulate these emotional states. And indeed, as you say, psychologists have discovered this effect labeling and named that very catharsis by a new term. When a person actually voices, I'm scared, or I'm afraid right now, or I'm excited now. And indeed, yes. it's also on a subjective level. And do you know what also works? It works even when a person is alone, but he says this aloud. Right. And there is a paradox here. Why? A person starts speaking in a state of, let's say, enslavement by secondary consciousness. In other words, the demon has captured him as personality, and the person is in fear. In fact, there's almost a panic attack. So, when the person starts voicing it all, he feels a relief. Yes, emotions become weaker. The panic attack disappears somewhere. Yes, hormones become normalized and so on. Thus, psychologists have come to such a conclusion as an affect labeling. Now, let's imagine the modern world. You are at home among your near and dear people, and you talk to yourself all the time. It's funny, isn't it, friends? Labeling your states. Yes, you label your states, even if you tell your family that you're labeling your states. And at this moment, well, whatever your close relative hears you say, a thought has come to my consciousness that I should go take a frying pan and give this close relative a good blow with that frying pan. Okay? He'll be full of joy, right? You yourself feel better. You feel better. The activity of your amygdala has For decreased, sure. but the activity of his amygdala it will certainly decrease. has most likely increased. Right. You have voiced the action. Yes, exactly. You have voiced what shaitan imposed on you. Hence, you've almost done it without doing it. You have taken power from shaitan, but there is no result. You haven't given attention. You feel good. Shaitan feels bad. 
and your close relative feels bad because he'll be afraid that you will eventually hit him and he will ponder. No, it's your problem, right? No, it's the problem of the entire family. Yes. You see? And the funniest and most laughable thing is that this practice of voicing everything was actually used by a lot of saints. And unfortunately, many of them were caught on that. Why? Because there are tricks on this path, tricks from the demon himself. People begin, it is really an easy practice, but it is very dangerous, you know? It's like mushrooms, for instance. There are mushroom pickers. They understand that here are edible mushrooms and here are the poisonous ones. But nowadays, mushrooms began to adapt. It's a paradox. And the paradox is that it's the only, let's say, living thing in this world that begins to adapt and change shape while being poisonous. Such a mimicry. To look like an edible thing. You see, in our world, all non-poisonous beings try to… To be rejected. Of course. They try to present themselves as poisonous for those around. Let's say, colubrids or lizards imitate snakes. Some midges imitate bees or wasps so that no one touches them, showing that they are allegedly poisonous, while a mushroom, on the contrary, hides its poison under an edible shape. So that's how it is, right? Whom does it serve? Right. So these saints, starting to talk to themselves and working against shaitan, moreover, they talked, regardless of what kind of a person they came across, there is such a way. It is really effective. But imagine how ridiculous it is. It doesn't matter. You enter a store, a thought comes to you, and you start voicing what's on your mind to the first person you meet. That's insanity, isn't it? Therefore… A 24-7 radio station. Absolutely right. However, Shaitan caught them and began to foist information about those people whom they met with. A person saw that a negative thought, something bad, regarding that individual came to him, and he didn't care. The goal and task was actually to voice it all. If there was something about someone and that person was near, it was announced to him. So people began to announce it, and later on those events began to happen to those people whom they talked about. Thus, they became the so-called holy fools. But the entire holiness ended at that. Why? Because people started coming to them, and those holy people lost their way. They began to like it, while shaitan only intensified it all. They were very close to God. However, tempted by shaitan, they remained in history as great martyrs, soothsayers, or holy fools. They were even canonized. But they are not in heaven. This is also true. So you see, even in catharsis, there are techniques that you cannot use, I would say, without understanding the entire essence. Meanwhile, all of us are overconfident. Since the way is easy, hence it will help me. Why would I work hard and long if there is a short and easy way? Even if shaitan foists something on me, I will be a herald. Yes, fine, I will tell the truth and predict. However, predictions from God and from the devil are different things. It is one thing when God helps, but He sends prophets for this purpose, who give true prophecies. And it's another thing when this is from shaitan. He talks about his plans, and those plans begin to come true. Yet shaitan's plans come true only when people are subordinate to him. If a person gains life and becomes spiritually free, shaitan loses power over him, and the person becomes responsible for his own choice and for his own life, because the concept of destiny is a written scenario from shaitan. Whereas when a person really becomes a spiritually free, God-loving being, and his goal, the goal of his entire life, is to come to the spiritual world, then the power of shaitan over him disappears. The person only prevents shaitan from carrying out his plans because such a person breaks not only shaitan's plans regarding himself, but also regarding those who are close to him and who hear him. Why? Because by telling the truth, the person makes other people free as well, and everything changes. Shaitan is forced to remake 
and rearrange this network of his anew, excluding people who are already invisible to him. So, my friends, the meaning of freedom and catharsis is great. It's not for nothing that the very Jesus Christ and many others gave us this tool, but you should also use it skillfully and understand what it is needed for, right? Mm -hmm. So, my friends, thank you very much. The questions are interesting. But the main thing, friends, is to love each other and to love God, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you.